Hi chemists. We're going to do another lab and this lab has to do with, I'll bet some of you have done this before. How many of you guys have ever played with baking soda and vinegar before? You put little drips of vinegar on it and the baking soda boils like crazy. Well that's basically what we're going to do today but we're going to use a different acid. We're going to use hydrochloric acid which is much stronger than acetic acid. That's what vinegar is, it's acetic acid. And we're going to very, make some very careful measurements with this. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to add hydrochloric acid to sodium bicarbonate, HNAHCO3, and it becomes carbon dioxide. That's what makes the bubbles. You're going to get water, H2O, and you're going to get sodium chloride left over. And so basically, after we're done adding the added and the, and the bubbles come off, what's left over is salt water, and then we're going to evaporate the salt or the water off, and what should be left is salt if we do it carefully enough, right? And this is kind of tricky to get it just right. So, what we're going to do is we're going to use an evaporating dish. An evaporating dish is this little dish, looks like this, it's ceramic. And we're going to use a watch glass. The reason why this is called a watch glass is because it looks like the cover of a watch. This makes a good cover for this. All right. So, let's make sure this is zeroed. It is. And we'll put that on there. And this says 85.32. So, write down 85.32 grams, or 0.33 grams, I guess it is. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add 2.5 uh, grams of sodium carbonate to that, sodium bicarbonate to that, all right? That's the baking soda. So I'm going to put this on here, and I'm going to add 2.50 grams to that. Let's see how accurate I can be. Oops, we're just a little bit over here, so let's take off a little bit. There we go. There's 2.50 grams. All right. So now, just to make sure, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add that 2.50 grams of sodium bicarbonate to the wash glass. I'm going to find the mass of the wash glass. Whoops. Let's make sure this is zeroed here. So 87.79. is our second measurement. That's the dish, the watch glass, and the sodium bicarbonate. All right. So now I'm going to put that up there. Don't need the balance for a while. So I put the evaporating dish up here. I'm going to move the balance. and I'm going to move this just a little bit. All right. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to lift up the watch glass. I'm going to slowly add one drop of acid at a time and I'm going to try to get all the sodium bicarbonate to react. All right, so, and it's going to take quite a bit of acid, so I'm going to add, every time I add a drop and it stops fizzing, I'm going to stop adding a drop. And what's in those bubbles? Carbon dioxide gas. I don't know if you can hear it, but it is definitely sizzling when it hits. It's 
so what's left over is the sodium bicarbonate that hasn't reacted and salt and water. So now as I add more drips of this, it's getting kind of mushy looking. It looks a little liquidy here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this a swirl, just make sure all the acid is in contact. And I don't know if you guys can hear that, but I can hear there's more reaction going taking place then. So I'm going to add a drop of acid and I'm going to kind of swirl that around a little bit. Because if I add too much acid, I'm going to have acid left over and then when I heat it, that becomes really dangerous and I really don't want to put a hole in my shirt from the acid splattering. closer to the end. I know there's still some white powder in there. As long as I can see the white powder, I also need to add more acid, but I don't want to get too too anxious and add a whole bunch and then have too much acid because that just when I heat it later, that's going to create a dangerous situation. Still fizzes when I add a drop. It just gets slow. Every time I add a drop, it gets a little bit slower. So when I add a drop and it doesn't fizz, that's when I know I'm done and I'm getting close, like I said. Still fizzes. To make sure you thoroughly mix it each time, otherwise the acid will kind of get separated from the sodium bicarbonate and it seems like it's done, but it's not really. And then you'll just add too much acid and then you're going to splatter hot acid later when we evaporate the water away from it. Sometimes it just takes patience if you're going to be a really good chemist. You might think to yourself, well, I'm just going to add a whole bunch in there, but that will could be a dangerous mistake later on. I need to work on my swirl technique. All right, I believe we're there. There we go, that's it. Okay, I need to wash rinse my hands real quick. All right, so now what we should have left over is just salt and water in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to evaporate this away, and I'm going to move the camera back a little bit here. And what we're going to do is we're going to, I'm going to slowly evaporate this away. Now if I go too fast on this, it's going to splatter. I don't want it to splatter. So the trick is to get it just hot enough so it starts to boil and make steam 
but doesn't get uh, but doesn't splatter. So this is definitely a technique thing. And notice I'm grabbing the Bunsen burner on the base, and that way it won't get hot on my hand. And I have really good control of this thing. I can see it's starting to get hot now. I see a little bit of steam coming off of this thing. So here's the bubbles. I'm gonna stand up so I can see a little better. Now, I don't know how well you guys can see this, but we're going to try, All right? But you can see that it's starting to get crusty around the edges, and it's getting kind of bubbly. I don't want any splattering on the camera, so I'll keep this back. And if when it does start to splatter, I'm going to put the watch glass over the top of it if it does. It's starting to get much drier in there. It's got a kind of a pasty appearance on the top. And the one thing I don't want to do is I don't want big chunks to come flying out of here because that's what usually what happens if you get in a big hurry. I still see a bubbling in there, and if it's bubbling, that means there's water. And if I can hear it crackling, that means there's water evaporating. But I'm getting pretty close. Okay, now there, I'm probably heating it just a little bit fast because I saw a little tiny white chunk come flying out of there, which meant it got too hot. All right, so it's looking like it's getting dry. I still see seam coming off of it, though. Alright, so I'm going to put the watch glass on top, and you're going to see, oh look, it got really steamy. That means there's a lot of water in there, and I don't know how well you guys can see this on here. Hoping you can, but there's a whole bunch of water droplets on top there. We have to keep heating this till every little bit of water is gone from that, and so I'm going to keep on heating here. It's way more fun to do this than to watch. Alright, I don't hear any more bubbling going on there. So what we just have to do is we have to keep heating until we get all the water off the top. And I don't know if you guys can see that or not, I hope you can. But there's a whole bunch of water droplets on there, and so we're going to keep heating that until we get all those little water droplets off of there. I don't know if you guys are getting a glare from the light or not, but... I see that there's a lot little water droplets on there. There's fewer and fewer and fewer. It's not going to take much longer. Almost gone. There's just a few little water droplets underneath on this side over here. When they're gone, we'll be done. And 
there goes the last little water droplet just evaporated off of there. So now what we need to do is we need to wait until this cools. Should be cool enough now that we can get a mass here. So what we're going to do is I'm going to use the crucible tongs. I'm going to very carefully lift this thing off here so I don't drop it because ceramic and glass breaks really easy. And so make sure this is zeroed here first. There we go. I'm going to put that on there. And we got 86.97. That's for our sodium chloride, our watch glass and sodium, our dish watch glass and sodium chloride, right? And so now you guys should be able to do the calculations. Follow what it tells you to do, right? So on there, and you you should get to it. This usually works really well. So hopefully this this will work out good for you guys.